I think my favorite game from round seven at the FIDEchess.com Grand Swiss was Indian Grandmaster Harika Dronavali's victory over Romanian Grandmaster Parlegras. The game really gets exciting right here, right now, when Parlegras miss evaluates or perhaps underestimates the potential of the attack that's about to happen. Whenever you're in these types of structures where your opponent has a bishop that you do not, obviously that's a fancy way of saying someone has the bishop pair and you don't, right? But really it's the bishop they have that you don't that has the potential to dominate the game because the dark squares are the color complex that the white will really struggle with defending uh, if the position is to open up. And of course, Harika understands this concept very well, knows that even if this bishop is temporarily blocked, that's not going to be the case forever. At some point, I'm going to find that D-pawn advancing and get that beast of a bishop open on that diagonal. Uh, and uh, all of these points, of course, understood by a very strong player like Parlegras, but underestimated here when he plays the move bishop to f3. Uh, as I analyzed at my blog, you can check it out. Queen to b3 was definitely needed here, specifically to stop Harika's next move, queen b6, that happened on bishop f3. Um, and variations like fe4 show you that white is defending everything just fine on the light squares, uh, might even be doing perfectly well there. Uh, if queen a5, now you put the bishop on d3 rather than f3, and it just would have helped all the pieces be communicating better toward the queen side, and we wouldn't have had the sort of blowout attack that Harika was able to get after the dark swords became open. On that note, let's see the fireworks. Bishop f3 was played. Here comes queen b6. You can already see a date that they have planned here, a long distance relationship thing happened on b2, and who knows, with the rook and bishop getting involved as well, maybe c3, spy that. Queen to b3 is played, but Harika's like, no soup for you. The queens aren't coming off anymore. Queen a6 is played, which not only threatens bishop a4, the skewer, but even after rook c1, she, sh she says, I'm still going to play bishop a4, the move, and that's what she does. When the queen moves to a3, if you want to pause the video, if you happen to be watching this on a social platform of ours, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, if you're watching the show, you can pause it. But this would have been a really brilliant way for Harika to finish it off that she didn't find, even though the move she played is probably the move I would have played. It's the it's the more natural move. Uh, but if you've uh, if you pause your video and you want to see it, rook to c3 was possible here. Double exclam, rook sacrifice. Uh, the main variation shows you that things like b takes c3 allow queen d3 check. And then you take, and white doesn't have anything to do. Not only am I going to win back lots of material, but you're probably getting checkmated in most variations. One of the ones I showed is that e5 is uh, really just delaying the inevitable. We take. After rook takes, e, uh, e takes a 4 e4 was also possible. Bring the rook in the game. Knight b1 meant by bishop c2. The only piece that hasn't had fun yet trying to defend the dark squares would be king b2, but then we just remove a defender and it's lights out. So this is only one variation of the many that I have over at the blog, uh, but would have been a really, really fun way to see this game end. Harika played the move d3. Okay, this is a great move, and it, and, it, and it shows exactly how powerful this bishop is. Release the Kraken, so to speak, right? These are very, very common ideas. The move I would have played instinctively without any calculation. Rook c3 takes a lot of work to make sure it worked, even though it did. Uh, so d3 played here, and the wheels continue to come off. B3, here comes rook to C2. Awesome stuff. After knight C4, B5. We trade on C2 and take the knight. Black is actually up a piece here and still with the attack. Okay, white wins back the piece, but it doesn't matter. We take B3, rook C8, and uh, as foreshadowed very early on, the dark squares would be the color complex that tells the story in this sort of game. Um, and uh, they're just indefensible by this, by this uh, bishop over here on F3. So rook H2 tries, bishop back with discovered check followed by queen entry to the dark squares, and white just resigns on the move. Queen takes uh, g3. Always try to give accurate analysis as much as I can in these quick videos. I will say that instead of the move queen a3, if white had found the move queen before, it's not resignable yet. The big difference is that in this line, not only is rook c3 not possible, despite the fact that Harika didn't find it, but also the b3 square is open for the knight. So after something like d3, knight b3, we get rook c2. The key is white did have an idea like king c1, maybe not taking the pawn to open the floodgates. And black is still much better here. I mean, queen d3 is a move. There's all kinds of stuff, but definitely not resignable yet. And, and wouldn't have allowed the crazy tactic that Harika did have here uh, with the move rook to c3. So either way, she wins a great game. She shows that the bishop was a beast, uh, a monster, and a very good dark square lesson. Very good. It's, it has a very Sicilian feel to it, right? The bishop becoming a monster when it matters most, and the color complex that you can't challenge because you lack the bishop pair really coming back to haunt you if you are uh, polygrus. So, hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, let's 
talk real quick about the broadcast and remind you that if you're checking this out on YouTube or social media, that the live broadcast is probably going as we speak. Go check it out. Let's see who Danny King and Anna Rudolph think have the best chance to uh, fight for winning a spot at the candidates and a chance to challenge for the World Chess Championship title. Hope you're enjoying these Missed on the Isle videos. Uh, check out all of them at the YouTube playlist, even some from the earlier rounds you might find instructive. And uh, see you around on chess.com.